capital planning. Williams Middle School, $1,500,000. Um, Glenbrook is uh, roof replacement, $1,900,000. And we just want to be proactive so that the, the town's aware of the fact that this is an issue that's out there that most certainly may come to uh, need to be addressed sooner than later, but it's not in our prioritized projects for FY17. The town's unsure about whether or not we're moving forward with building right. projects. They're, they're not really comfortable funding, you know, putting money into these buildings, you know, up to, to the amounts that potentially these projects could run, including the roofs, right. until we have a clear sense of whether or not, you know, the town's going to support, you know, new middle schools or, or not. Like, how many years can we go on not fixing these big things right. because we're maybe going to build a new middle school? The high school, the Esplanade storage area. Yes. Now I know that's an issue. So is that something we're going back to the builders about, that it's damp? I don't believe that trying to go back to the design, the architects or the construction company <coughs> is going to result in any improvements in this area. So I've, I've brought in engineers to look at that and that's a dehumid, dehumidifier type of uh, solution to that. Uh, I'm going to go straight to the finance report. The summer program has been running for decades and more recently in the past two years we've added after school enrichment um, pro an after school enrichment program at each of our schools as well as a lifelong learning program at the high school for adults. We suffered a tenth of a ten thousand five hundred dollar loss in the summer program and uh, two thousand dollars in the after school program and a thousand dollars in the lifelong learning program. I'm 100% committed to turning uh, this program around for this coming school year. So included in the packet today is uh, the draft flyer that is going to be used uh, for promotion in the superintendent search. Uh, so we are going to review it. Obviously the, the biggest thing, and this is part of the conversation we have to have, is a recommended salary range. Right, and I can tell you from my conversations with Dr. Rush, um, his recommendation um, for what it's worth was 150 to 175. I don't think that saying that we're going to cap out at 175 is all that unreasonable, considering that's a lot of money, and that would still be the highest paid superintendent of a district this size in the 96 cities and towns of Western Massachusetts. And we're still saying that the final salary will be negotiated right. and determined based upon proven experience, qualifications, and meeting criteria. All those in favor of the motion of salary range 140 to 170. Aye. Oh, hallelujah. They are going to meet and <coughs> do the video, watch the video interviews, review the resumes, rank their candidates, then they would submit six to eight semi-finalists to school committee. This meeting can be done in executive session. Once the committee makes recommendations to school committee, this is now open session. And then if we narrow down to two to three finalists, this is open. So he is now recommending that the next step of interviews be whoever is available from the 15 on the date that we choose, because we've already set the one date and we said they've got to be available for the one. Whoever is available from that plus three school committee members, so it's not a quorum, do the face-to-face -face interviews for the semifinalists. Since it's still made up of the search committee, this can now be done in executive session. Then the 15 or whoever remains of the search committee plus the three school committee members, they would recommend two to three finalists. And then this would be open session. So all those in favor of the suggested search committee frame on the right. All those opposed? All right, so it's a four to three vote. Um, we decided that it would be best to hold an informative for forum in order to share and gather information regarding the current state of our middle schools and what our options are moving forward. Um, the date we found for that is Thursday, 
November 19th at 7 o'clock. We are, we've updated the uh, tobacco product policy. We included what is a bolded outline, which is bolded in your packets, the line that says including electronic cigarettes, e-cigarettes or e-cig or e -cig or e-cigarettes, personal vaporizers or electronic nicotine delivery systems. Uh, so this is going to be posted to the website for 30 days for public comment. Uh, and this is actually a very good policy for the committee to review because it speaks to the way in which public participates at our meetings. The only thing that we added, and we did not change anything, the only thing that we added was a line in the sixth paragraph which says, which basically allows the chairperson the right to shorten or extend the length of time that a person can deliver comments at their discretion. So and that is policy section BDEH, -E public participation at committee meetings will also be posted to the district website for 30 days. We made an update to JKAA, which is physical restraint of students. Uh, and the changes to this policy are essentially reflecting updates and regulations uh, that the Board of uh, that the Board of Education and Department of Elementary and Secondary Education recently promulgated. Um, essentially, the highlights of this are that you cannot use chemical restraint any longer, so you can't medicate somebody to restrain them. Uh, you also can no longer use um, mechanical restraint, and mechanical restraint would be like um, like a chair that you would strap them to, for instance. Uh, it also limits the use of a prone restraint. A, a prone restraint would be a restraint that where the student is face down. This is really only in extreme circumstances can it be used, but it's understandable that occasionally that may be something that has to be employed. Uh, and that will also be posted to the website for 30 days.